welcome we are still in chapter one we are breaking down the consequences of trauma into three different sections the first section is called terror which is actually broken down even further so this first part is just a summary of what the terror is um, and we are going to get started i just lost the page of course because silly me all right here we go the immediate response to trauma is terror. Something is not right, and the amount of effort makes it right. Sorry, and no amount of effort makes it right. In the case of the separated child, the ability to reestablish connection to the mother is a terrifying experience. Infants who are placed in hospital nurseries experience this terror to some extent. Babies live in the moment. They do not know what that in time they will again be with the mother the same is true with infants in daycare they have no object constance, constancy the ability to hold mother in memory when she is absent every separation from the mother seems like forever to the infant this is terrifying so this is something that we've talked about um a little bit with the NICU and um, the fourth trimester idea is that the baby needs the mom, right? Now, with the NICU or like in the nursery part, the baby doesn't know when the mom is coming back. The trauma is still happening, but then it gets relieved when biological mom is with them, right? They can rekindle that, that part. With adoption, though, instead of being rekindled with your biological mother, you have a stranger all the time. So your body is in constant terror without recognizing it. And the thing is, is that adoptive parents, caregivers, don't recognize that trauma when it comes to babies they can recognize it when a child is older in some, to some extent but they feel like the blank slate theory still exists and that is still a problem all right continuing on some of the physical responses to terror are an elevation in pulse rate and blood pressure as documented by kate burke cleary in a 1995 unpublished study of 400 infants in a san francisco hospital titled before attachment the effect of infant mother separation on adopted newborns sleep disturbance irritability and gastrointestinal problems like we've talked about with the anxiety with like stomach problems that happens quite often right um where was i uh, are also noted in baby sep paraded from their mothers there may be elevated levels of adrenaline and cortisol circulating throughout the central nervous system which makes this experience more pronounced and may result in memory traces being more deeply imprinted even in situations where the mother and baby will be going home together the practice of putting babies in the nursery instead of keeping them with their mothers creates tension and fear for the babies and a sense of sadness and unease for the mothers in extreme cases that separation can result in postpartum depression for the mothers and a difficulty in bonding between mother and child at the very time when the mother and baby should be bonding they are in separate rooms yearning for one another so this is true um we don't talk often enough about postpartum depression when it comes to biological mothers um, in the sense that a child is kept and the mother has postpartum depression, at least it's becoming more and more talked about, but we really don't even discuss it like at all with birth mothers. Um, and that is a huge thing. You know, we really do need to discuss it. Now, I granted my channel is mostly for adoptees, I do absolutely welcome birth mothers here. Um, and if you want to share your story and your, you know, how you felt, how you still feel, that is great. There are definitely birth mothers that I follow on TikTok 
and we elevate their voices just as much because they are also spoken over. But the thing about birth mothers and adoptees is that we definitely need each other more than um more than just this bonding, right? We need to be a team to work on creating better societal point of view um, and better laws surrounding adoption and external care. So they're definitely beginning to be heard, but not nearly as not, uh, you know, enough. All right, where was I? Um, okay. In the case of premature births, there is an even longer separation, which often results in a wound which resembles that of adoptees. An impaired bond and lack of trust in the mother's ability to meet the needs of her child and to protect them from danger. For a birth mother who may not see her child again, there may be a response close to terror. She certainly feels the loss of a devastating grief which is seldom recognized by anyone else. She often has no acknowledgement for her loss and no advocates for her need to grieve. Even today, when there are groups being formed to help women who have experienced miscarriages, abortions, or stillbirths, nothing is mentioned about the birth mother and her need to grieve. Or, if she does have people who are sympathetic to her loss, Their sympathy is often accompanied by reassurance that she has done the right thing. They don't, they all, wait, sorry. They don't realize that there's no connection between her intellectual understanding of her need to make this decision and her instinctive self that this is not normal. That, even to her, her who made the decision, it feels not right. As we know in the past, many birth moms were not allowed to make their own decision about keeping their babies, as we've read in The Girls Who Went Away. So if you're new here, please go listen to that read. Um, That is all about birth mothers who were forced to give up their babies in the time um, of Roe versus Wade. But there's this is still happening today, not to that extent where birth moms are sent away, but there's still this huge stigma if a mother is in poverty or single, um, there, there's just a whole bunch. And so it's still a lot of co- coercion instead of family preservation and help and support. So it, it's definitely a problem. All right, continuing on. The decision was made by a judgmental society and the parents who were influenced by that society. Birth mothers who began to form their own groups, but they often feel that the general population doesn't understand their grief. Um, so that is the end of this part when it comes to terror, and it's going to be broken up into hypervigilance, intrusion, or re-experiencing, repetition, compulsion, and disassociation, numbing, or constru- constriction. Um, now, with that last part with the groups and the general population, there are some groups that are meeting with birth moms. Now, I have heard, and again, this is not my experience, so this is just information that I found from personal experiences of birth mothers, again, via TikTok and people I'm friends with, where they sought these birth mother groups, um, and they were generally held by adoption agencies, And it's usually for birth mothers within the first year of giving their child up for adoption. Usually like the first couple weeks to months. Um, And it's still very washed in the sense that um, the facilitator is paid by the agency. And they don't welcome birth mothers who are, you know, two years, three years, four years plus out um, because the longer you've been in the birth mother life, the more you realize how it has impacted you as well as your adopted child, you know, the child that you gave up for adoption. Um, And that includes even with um, 
open adoptions, right? Which is, is a legal process. So they don't welcome birth mothers beyond because they don't want them to regret the adoption. They don't want this, um, they don't want the truth essentially to come out. And they don't want these birth mothers who are newer, right? So like maybe they're a week out to turn around and dis, uh, was it dissolute the adoption, basically change their mind because they have um, a limited time to do so. Some states are, you know, six weeks. Some states are 30 days, so like four weeks. Some are, you know, two weeks. It, it just depends on your location. So just make sure that you are aware of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, they they just want to sell babies at the expense of the child's trauma and the birth mother's trauma to gain money from adoptive parents. And they paint this light that's beautiful and wonderful and all this, and yet it's it's just not. So that being said, I will see you guys next time to talk about hyper village vigil, hyper vigilance and um you guys can check out the shorts and the other readings and thank you guys for tuning in